Passerine Pass has become known as the America's first, the classic America's first battle. The notion that when we first start, when we first get into a war, first time, we don't do so well. Um, worst defeat in the U.S. Army's history, at least during World War II, arguably. <laughs> November of um, 1942 when U.S. forces along with some British forces landed in North Africa uh, during Operation Torch. And we now had a, a case where uh, the British 8th Army was driving from Egypt and Libya west and pushing the German and Italian forces in Africa uh, towards Tunisia. And it was decided the Allied forces would also use the, for, uh, the troops that landed at Torch to drive east uh, towards the uh, uh, Tunisian capital of Tunis and catch the Germans from both sides. Start of February 1943, the uh, Americans, the British, and the French had uh, were engaged to, had more or less lost the race to Tunisia. Uh, the idea was to get in behind the Germans in North Africa. Uh, Field General Montgomery had defeated the uh, Axis Rommel's forces uh, at El Alamein, and they were retreating across North Africa, and the idea was to get in behind them and cut them off at Tunisia. But because of the winter weather, the problems of logistics, uh, it was very difficult for them to make the, make that, cover that amount. It's a pretty immense amount of territory, a lot of miles to cover. So uh, by, early fe by the start of February of 1943, the Allies were pretty much in a static position from north to south along uh, in, in Tunisia. Uh, the Germans sent reinforcements from Sicily that land in Tunisia in late 42, early 43. And with these reinforcements, Rommel is able to go on the offensive. Meanwhile, the Western force of the Allies under Lieutenant General Dwight D. Eisenhower is driving to the east uh, with the objective of taking Tunis uh, as part of uh, that, that crushing the, uh, the German and Italians between two forces. And they're heading towards Tunis when Rommel gets reinforced. Uh, he decides to go on the offensive and he's going to attack the Allies coming from the west first. Uh, the way this battlefield's laid out, you've got the north-south uh, uh, eastern dorsal mountains, uh, a couple of passes there near a little town called Fade, F-A-I-D, and uh, the western dorsal, which is farther west toward Kasserine Pass. And uh, the Germans struck at Fade, um, captured these French outposts that were covering a couple of passes through the, uh, and drove the Allied outposts in. Major General Lloyd Fredendahl commander of the 2nd Corps, uh, is ordered to counterattack and retake Vaid with uh, the 2nd Corps, and the counterattack doesn't work. It's repulsed by the Germans, and they start to retreat uh, back towards CDLCs. Um, the Germans continue their assault, uh, their attack, their advance uh, to, to push the western arm of the Allied armies back. Uh, the uh, uh, Americans are again pushed back and they decide to set up a new defensive line uh, at the Kasserine Pass. The Americans assemble a hasty defense force uh, from all those retreating units, primarily the 1st Infantry Division and 1st Armored Division, and the Germans come in and attack with five divisions. Uh, and it takes them starting the attack on the 19th, uh, except for some outposts on the high ground around the pass. Uh, they occupy the pass by midday on the 20th. And um, the Americans tried to counterattack um, on something right out of the bat charge of the Light Brigade, coming across the open field with a radio truck playing Stars and Stripes Forever, <laughs> and uh, just got just got thoroughly uh, wiped out. Um, the Germans just let them come in, trap, trap them, around, you know, encircled them around the corners, and uh, the 88 anti-tank guns opened up, and one t American tank after another went off like a Roman candle all across the front. So it was a pretty 
pretty nasty defeat on the American side. It's also pretty much the first big battle the U.S. Army's in, uh, and it's their baptism of fire. Now, some units did really well, but overall, we were pushed back again. The whole operation, the, the Germans probably advanced about 100 miles. And they were suddenly faced with the option of maybe expanding their objectives for this limited offensive. Rommel wanted to go all the way to Tepesa, but through a lot, because of a lot of the wrangling within the uh, German high command, um, that attack was not pressed, and the Americans were able, they, they were driven from Kasserine Pass, which gives the battle its name, but the British with, the Americans with British help were able to make a stand just beyond that pass, and Rommel finally withdrew after, after the close of that action. As a result of Kasserine Pass, uh, American leadership and British leadership, as a matter of fact, uh, saw some changes that needed to be made. Uh, among the Americans, uh, we reevaluated the tactical doctrine for mostly infantry and armored units. Uh, a lot of the armored units were beat up pretty badly. They took a lot of losses, particularly uh, with the um, M3 Lee tank. Um, but at the time, the Sherman M4s were coming into Africa, so they were able to replace with the better tank. Uh, and some personnel changes as well. Frieden Hall was relieved of command of Second Corps and he was replaced by a Major General George S. Patton who was soon after that uh, uh, promoted to Lieutenant General Three Stars. There were a lot of things we still had to learn about her doctrine. Um, the troops had to be toughened up a bit, although they, they showed themselves to be remarkably resilient in the face of the, of the routes that they, that they took. Mm. And um, we lost a number of soldiers, uh, hundreds of soldiers became prisoners as a result of the German offensive. Uh, those two hill positions had to surrender when the American attack failed. Mm. Um, it was not a shining moment for American arms. The significance of Kasserine Pass was First, the British were not very impressed with the American Army's ability to fight, uh, so that had to be corrected, and Eisenhower and his staff set about doing that. Um, second, uh, interestingly enough, this was Rommel's last battlefield victory, uh, and it was also the first time he faced Americans in combat, uh, and as the baptism of fire for the U.S. Army in, in World War II, um, they took a lot of lessons from it that would actually create the army or lead the army to be what it became and the unstoppable force of World War II.